All right, what I'd like to do is show you how to find um, the surface area and the volume of a rectangular prism. So remember, a rectangular prism or any type of prism is when you have your when you have like multiple bases. When you have your base up front, and then you also have a base in the back. All right, um, a cylindrical prism would look something like this. And our rectangle or triangular prism looks something like that, right? Where you have two examples of your prism. And it's pretty much what it, it's your base and just lay, put on top of each other just to make a prism. So if I want to find the surface area, remember the surface area is the everything that kind of makes to take up a, um, a figure. So I have a can of corn here. And this is what you call a cylindrical prism or a cylinder. And the surface area for this would be all the metal that it takes to make up this figure. Um, so you can think of like a box of saltines or a box of cereal. The cardboard that it takes to make that box um, is going to be your uh, is going to be your surface area. Okay. Think about if you like dropped it in water, it would all get wet. That's your surface area. Inside would not get wet. That'd be more dealing with volume. And so the stuff that would get wet or stuff that would be exposed on the outside, the cardboard that makes it up, is your surface area. So to calculate the surface area, um, a couple things we need to understand about this figure. There is a couple sides that we cannot see. So I'm going to draw these little dotted lines for you to represent that. There is a bottom, there is a back side, and there is a left side here. All right. And the other thing is, this is a rectangle. Remember, rectangles have opposite sides that are exactly the same. So if this bottom is three, this top is gonna to be three. If this is two, that's two. If here's four, that length is gonna be four, that length's gonna be four, and this little length inside there is gonna be four. The same thing transposes. If this width is three, well back here has to be three, and if this length is two, over here has to be two. And I'm just gonna erase this in there. Um, I don't believe I'll do that one either. So I just wanted you guys to see that so you can see that what we're going to do is we're going to produce our prism into a net. And if I was to kind of like, if you take away a, a, a box and you unfold it to all its element, it's going to look something like this. Let's see here. How do I want to do my net? Okay, well here, here's my box, right? And I said that this one has a width of two and three. So this one is a two by three. So the width here is gonna be three. The length we said was four. So that means all of them have a length of four. However, if this length is three, then the other length has to be two. Because remember, what I'd do is I'd fold this up here and then I'd take this side up there. So those two edges have to match. So that's two, then that's two. That had to be two, and then this one would have to be three as well. So now, to find the total surface area, I just need to find the area of each one of these box or figures. Two times three is six. Four times two is eight. Four times three is 12. Four times two is eight. 4 times 3 is 12, and 2 times 3 is 6. Now, just like a, a rectangle, um, a rectangular prism, remember a rectangle has like opposite sides are equal to each other? Well, a rectangle prism is going to have opposite sides. My front should be equal to my back, so I should have two sides that are equal, 6 and 6, yes. My left, right side should be the same area as my left side, which would be 4 times 2, which is 8. 8, 8, good. My top should be the same as my bottom. 4 times 3 is would be 12 and 12, so I'm good. Now, to find the total surface area, I'm just going to add them up. So I do 6 plus 6 plus 8 plus 8 plus 12 plus 12. 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 12 plus 12 is 24. So 30, 40, looks like I have my total surface area is equal to 52. So now, to find the volume, to find the volume of the figure, the volume is going to be all the stuff that's going to be in the inside. Well, this is still 3, 2. So I'm going to kind of eliminate the rest of the stuff. And so the volume is going to be all the distance in the inside. So what I need to do is, if I can find the area of what, the face, which would be 2 times 3, which is 6, right? 
So that means that's this side right here is six. Now to three-dimensionally represent that, I can say if this had a length of one, for two times three is six, six times one is six. So I could say, I could kind of break off a little uh, prism myself and say, well, if it has a height of one, the whole area or the volume of this, because remember the volume of a, uh, a length would be, or volume of a prism is length times width times height. Well, this would still be six. Well, what happens is, what you notice is, what you guys need to see is, when you're dealing, why is it length times width times height? Well, length times width is gonna give you the area of the face. Well, how many of these faces can we have? Well, here's one, if I did it again, all right, if I did it again, that'd be another six. So this area is six, plus six, plus six, plus six. Each one of these slices has an area of six, or what we can actually call it, since they have a depth of one, they have a volume of six. So when I add them all together, I get six, 12, 18, 24. So I can say the volume is equal to length times width times height, where this is the area of my base. So volume equals six times four, which is equal to 24. And that's how you find the volume and the surface area of a rectangular prism.